hi Lucia nice to see more work from you let's see what you've done here mother is working father is staying home let's see what you wrote in recent times there has been seen an increase of parental leave while the maternity leave decreased this new development appeared as a result of the modern life changes well, as I will present some of the top reasons of this phenomenon and will argue why this is a positive development, giving examples from UNICEF and the government of Sweden to demonstrate points and support arguments. Okay, so there are a few things I want to change. First of all, let's talk about this, parental leave. Parental is not the word which means only for fathers. You're thinking paternal or we actually call it paternity leave. So parental is the wrong word. Parental refers to parents of either gender. So parental is the wrong word. Um, and then when we think of maternity leave or paternity leave, we think of the break that parents take after the birth of a new child. Um, this essay has not been so specific in requesting this. It's talking in general about a lifestyle change which extends beyond just the birth of that child. So, you know, it could be for the entire childhood of, of a young person. So it would be incorrect to talk just about paternity leave or maternity leave. Okay, so you have framed it uh, a little too narrowly for my preference. But also really important is the fact that paternal leave, parental leave, sorry, parental leave is a wrong word. So what I would have preferred here is something like, in recent times, there has been an increase in fathers staying home while mothers return to work. Okay, you could have done that, although admittedly, it's a little too close to what's written here. So in other words, I really just want you to change this entire first sentence, okay? You could have said something like, uh, thanks to modern life changes, more mothers uh, have become the primary breadwinners um, of the family, while fathers have chosen to stay home and take care of children. So that would have been a nice way to do this, okay? All right. And then you don't have to write the second sentence. Then this essay will present some of the top reasons for, not of, the reasons for something we said, the top reasons for this phenomenon, and we'll argue why this is a positive development, giving examples. Okay, fine. And the rest of it is fine. To begin with, in terms of reasons for, again, reasons for something. Uh, in terms of reasons for this development, there is ample evidence that sometimes men have to take this role. Careful. Which is this role? It's not clear. Okay. Um, which role? It, it's really not clear, so you have to specify. This is largely because some women are asked to return to work as their presence can be critical for the company. For example, many project managers in some big companies are women, and in their contracts, mm, careful with your grammar, uh, in some big companies are women, and in their contracts, it is stimulated, or again, stipulated, this is wrong. Let's try it again. And in their contracts, the right to take a maximum of three-month maternity leave is stipulated. That would have been okay. Okay? Therefore, men have to support their partner's, okay, here you need an apostrophe S. Men have to support their partner's career path and stay with their offspring for a longer period. The second reason is more directly, you need an L-Y here, okay? Uh, money related. Both maternity and paternity leave are fully covered for a certain amount of time. However, the partner with the biggest wages will boost the family's budget more. All right, not more here. If I don't understand this, if who takes the parental leave? I'm confused. As men are earning more overall, I don't like this tense here. It should be as men earn more overall, they tend to take the paternity leave. All right, you also have to be careful with here. You don't want to make an overgeneralization. You want to say, as men tend to earn more overall, uh, they prefer to take paternity leave. Therefore, it's conclusively clear that the employment requirements and the family budget are the main reasons for the paternity leave development. 
Okay, again, all this focus on paternity leave, as far as I'm concerned, is is incorrect. Um, it's about a lifestyle change, not just leave, which, as you said, is three months, nine months, six months, whatever. Okay? So, um, not great here in, in with this vocabulary, all right? It's not the right way to phrase this. All right, let's look at the next paragraph. This new trend, however, has a positive impact on modern families. Get rid of the. When you say the, it's as if we know which modern families you're talking about, but we don't. You mean all modern families. So, or you could have specified on the modern families that follow this model. You have to specify which modern families you're talking about. So this new trend, however, has a positive effect on modern families. Firstly, the time spent by the father with his child has a lifelong bonding effect. Grammar. The time spent by the family, the father with his child has a lifelong bonding effect. But I don't really like this expression. It doesn't feel natural. Um, allows for stronger bonding or allows uh, the time spent by the father with his child allows them to bond better or to build a stronger bond. But this does not work. For instance, recent empirical research from UNESCO demonstrated that 75% of children in families where the father took at least half a year paternity leave, no comma, again, paternity leave is wrong, developed healthy long-term relationships, high self-esteem, and important social skills. Secondly, the increased number of paternity leave, that's wrong, increased number of paternity leave. What does that mean, the increased number? Has an important role on equality. All right, the whole sentence needs to be rewritten. Uh, how about the increase in fathers staying at home has an important role on uh, in equality, role in something, not on. For example, Sweden is one of the countries where the government gives a certain amount of days off for both parents. This period usually is split equally, L-Y, between partners, each one being able to be part of their child's growth and development. Also, women are able to progress in their career while men are taking care of children. Well, men, okay. Thus, it's possible to say beyond doubt that paternity brought benefits for all family members. No, it's not paternity. That's the wrong word, too. So you can see I'm getting kind of... Uh, I'm having problems with this because you keep talking about paternity leave, but that's wrong because you're using this expression incorrectly. We're not talking about paternity leave. We're talking about the decision for a man to forfeit his career to stay home and raise the children while the woman goes out to work. So a lot of what you wrote here about splitting paternity leave and splitting the time and you know the mother gets half time, the father gets half time, all this is, is inappropriate. It's not what the essay is asking you to talk about. All right, that and then there's all these grammatical mistakes which make it kind of challenging, okay? So from the arguments and examples given, it is clear that the upward trend of paternity leave results from the modern society's necessity. All right, again, the you don't want to talk about an upward trend. This is a task one kind of word. It doesn't work here. The um, increasing trend would have been okay. Uh, and then again, paternity leave I've already talked about results from modern society's needs. Get rid of the. Nevertheless, this is undoubtedly a positive development as it benefits children's apostrophe s development and women's apostrophe s careers s. It is predicted that father's s apostrophe involvement in child care will increasingly be boosted, okay, in the next years. So you can see, Lucia, that I really had to correct quite a bit here uh, in terms of vocabulary, in terms of grammar, and then also, um, yeah, primarily vocabulary, but this problem with vocabulary really kind of shifted the whole meaning of this essay, and so it created some challenges, all right? Um, let's take a look at the rainfall line chart. Let's see what you wrote. Uh, line graph, sorry. The line graph, which is measured in millimeters, illustrates the amount of rain which fell at ELL each month in three regions of Great Britain, fine. Overall, the entire graph presented fluctuations. However, it rained the most in England during the entire year. Good. In July, all three countries had nearly the same amount of rainfall. Lovely. 
To begin with, in terms of England and Wales, the pattern was almost the same for the entire period, with the main difference in the amount of rainfall, as January had over 100 ml of rain in England and just over 50 in Wales, followed by, careful with this language here, by fluctuation, period. That's it. That's the only word you need, okay? The least wet period for England was between May and June with around 75 ml, while Scotland had it in April with 25 ml, 27 ml. Subsequently, the wettest month of the year was December for England with 135 and July for Wales with 140. Okay. Um, so we talked about this. The least wet period was between May and June. Okay, fine. I thought this was a little awkward. Uh, the least wet period for England was between May and June with about 75 ml, while uh, for Scotland, this was in April. That would have been a better way to say it. While in Scotland, this was in April, where this refers to the least wet period. Uh, and then that's fine. Let's see. So you decided to talk about Scotland and England. All right, I kind of guess I understand, kind of. I mean, their trends are roughly similar from like the, this half, like from the second half of the year, roughly similar, but not entirely. I can understand why you would put them together. Okay. You know why I would have put them together? Uh, just because they pretty much started around the same time and they ended, they started around the same place and they ended roughly around the same place whereas wales was like in a totally different ballpark okay uh let's see as far as scotland is concerned it had the most prominent ups and downs don't call them ups and downs call them fluctuations ups and downs sounds really uh basic and it, it doesn't really feel appropriate for task one language uh in the first half of the year plummeting from nearly 125 in january to just less than 25 in the next month following no followed by followed by a surge in march when the rainfall hit its peak p-e-a-k at 170 the rainfall was more stable from may to september after which there were monthly fluctuations in october november and december with 170 52 and 105 respectively okay um this is fine it's fine. I mean, it's not wonderful. It's fine. And I'll tell you why I say that. I don't 100% love the uh, points that you chose. It's 238 words, which is long-ish for sure. I know that there's a lot of information here. And it kind of becomes overwhelming, like what to choose to talk about. And I understand that. Um, let me tell you the points that I think are worth talking about. There are 15, which is still a lot, but there is an easy way to do it. Let me show you what I mean. I would have started with Scotland. Why? Because it is it started the year at the highest. So I would have talked about, let me show you what I would have done for Scotland. Um, I would have said Scotland started the year with the highest amount of rainfall at 125 ml. Uh, the following month, it dropped to its lowest point at 20 ml only to surge to the first of two peaks in March at 1.30, whatever that is, uh, period. The second peak was in October at the same amount, and it ended the year just slightly above 100 ml. That's it. Done. Those five points. See? So it's one, two, three, four, five. Then for England, I would have said England had the least fluctuation of all three countries, it started the year at 120, uh, reaching a low in June at whatever the number that is, and then experienced three peaks of whatever that is, 130, let's say, in July, September, and December, where it ended the year. Done. Okay, so do you see how I'm doing it? I'm really focusing. You're going to talk about the fluctuation. You're going to say all three of them fluctuated a lot. In your overview, you should say that England had the least fluctuation. And then you mentioned those five points, okay? So for Wales, they are one, two, three, four, because it's the only period of stability anywhere on the graph, and then five. That's it, okay? So that's a good way of doing this. Um, yeah, and you didn't have to write quite so much, but just figuring out what the key points here are, 
I think is useful rather than just kind of, you know, picking random points in the in the chart. All right, so keep writing. I'll be looking forward to your next set and I'll be waiting for it. Goodbye.